A traditional diet is a common link among all native cultures in Alaska. Alaska natives have subsisted off the land and water for thousands of years. And today we continue to hunt and gather foods that nourish our people and our culture. On St. Paul Island in the Bering Sea and Atka in the Western Aleutians, the traditional diet consists mostly of marine mammals, fish, and reindeer. This film explores the many benefits of subsistence as told by the residents of St. Paul and Atka. As you will see, there are many reasons why a traditional diet is important to our people. My name is uh, Alan Zajocni from uh, Atka. It's a, uh, I think it's a pretty good island. Well, it's uh, it's pretty scenic. It's got a nice view, and um, the moon looks nice over, over coming up and bright out at night and peaceful. We have halibut. You make fish pie out of halibut and fish pie out of salmon and octopus casserole. You know, there's a reindeer and seal, sea lion. I think that's one of the strong reasons why we, we need subsistence out here is because we can't afford to buy all the groceries at the store. You know, a steak almost costs 30 bucks down there. And, you know, just, just the rain, reindeer steak it's, is, I think, tastes a lot better than a frozen product. If you're subsistencing out here, I, I think it's a physical activity. You have to walk a lot, you know, go up to, to them and, you know, set up for uh, shooting and, you know, after you do your field practices and cleaning it and you have to pack it back down to, so you can come, come back to town with it. So that's a lot of work, just dragging a rain, 100 pound reindeer or more, 200 pound reindeer. I am an expert in the field of subsistence yet. I don't think I feel I still got a lot to learn and a lot to practice. That's how our stories develop, I guess. Let's go out there and hunt. Uh, my name is Dustin Jones. I'm the Island Sentinel through the tribal government of St. Paul. And uh, some of the things I do in my job is to keep an eye on uh, wildlife, um, marine debris, uh, watch the seals, keep an eye on the seals, and uh, sea lion sampling, taking stuff for studies. Last week, my friend Jesse and I went and got a sea lion. And we cut it up, and we brought it back to town, and we gave it out to my uh, grandma, his mom, and uh, my fiance's mom. So this is my way, I think, of giving back to the community, you know? And a lot of people can't go out there and get it themselves, and, and I know they eat it, so a lot of people ask me to go out and get it for them. And uh, in the, probably a month, we probably go probably, probably 15 times, maybe, in a month. It's just to get away, you know? It's our little, like, like our little getaway. I mean, I see that being a constructive way of spending time, you know, and you, have, you know, you have a friendship, you know, and it's just like your own little feeling that you get when you're out there. I mean, everybody has their own different feeling, you know. You know, I, I like just like to be out there in the fresh air, and so it just makes you feel good, you know, because hardly any place in the world now you can go where there's fresh air, you know, all the time. Just by watching, just seeing things, you know. So it's, it's your learning and you just, sometimes you don't even think about it, you know, you're seeing like how birds act and stuff like that, or how different animals act.
towards uh, Wreath Point, which is not too far from the village. My name is Vlad Shablin. I'm from St. Paul Island, born and raised here. I grew up on native food. Everything uh, that we had here was off the land. There was no store food uh, that was like what it is now. And uh, my way of living w wasn't very hard. It was uh, a life that was enjoyable as a child. We had a lot of loving uh, from all the people here on the island because we were one big happy family. And every place we went, we had native food. We, uh, we were raised, my mom, my, while my dad would uh, bring you, go out hunting, bring in the seal, sea lion during winter time and uh, ducks. And then my, my, my mom would prepare that for us. And in, in them days, we were, we were, I guess we were, you could say we were healthy. We didn't have to go to the doctor as much as they uh, do now. Nobody had major problems about health because everything in our diet was uh, off the land. My name is Edna Floyd. Um, I'm originally from St. George Island. My maiden name was Philomonoff. Well, I have over 22 years of service on the island. I worked for the city for five years, and then I've worked for the school district. I teach bilingual. The subsistence, you know, go out, subsistence hunting, fishing has always been very important to the people here. Even the young hunters that we have right now, you know, whatever they get, they'll go to the elders, halibut, seal meat, sea lion, birds were the main staple of our diets. Days back you couldn't freeze your meat because there were no freezers so you had to salt and we still do it to this day. I salt my meat and then we make stew and soup. Yes. We had no dances to fall back on so we got the community involved and started our dance group. And we have about 30 in our group right now. Whenever they start dancing, they're just completely different. You know, they just take pride in themselves. Some they can do, they can accomplish, they can perform, people can praise them. We have uh, one of our dancers is called Chagir, um, Albert Jigging, Dance of the Moon. And then we have the Seal Harvest Dance. I think all those connect the dances, the food, uh, uh, and church has a lot to do with the cultures. They all intertwine, you know, they're all important to us here on the islands. My name is Crystal Swatsaf. My Unach name is Kthamidiga, which means sweet ice. I'm from Atka, Alaska. Atchach is the name of our island in our language. I've always been you know, attracted to native dancing. When the school first started talking about you know, bringing Unach dancing back in today's times, I, I was one of the most excited kids in the school. Traditional foods are one of the last things that we have left to remind us of what, what it means to be Unangach. I love all kinds of fish. It's a big part of our traditional diet and I also love seal and sea lion. I would have to say that my favorite traditional food is 
reindeer prepared in any way. Traditional foods are important because we have lost so much of our culture and our tradition and our heritage and anything that we have left is it's vital to to our continuance as a as a people My name is Spiridon Zuchni. Well, me and my wife, we eat native food just about every day. We don't eat too much American food in here. Oh, my reindeer, then that sea lion, and seal, I like seal, yeah. We get seal, them smaller, smaller seals, you know, but big, they skin them up. Then they scrape that skin, oil. We age the oil, then they get it stinky, you know. Then they boil fish and they eat it with a fish. It's delicious that way. Yeah. Well, we we understand we got a good vitamins in our food. You know. It's like that uh, sea urchin. So they study it and they find out they had a good vitamin in sea urchin. It was better vitamin than a chicken egg and a cow liver. That's what they had it on newspaper here. Yeah. So I know it's a good food. My name is Millie Prokopiev and I'm community health representative. I lived in Atka for all my life. If there's any kind of sickness and stuff going on, I try to look into how to prevent it so it don't spread fast. And then I just get out information to the people. They're like a little fern, but they have a real strong smell. And this is the top, top to it. But this is what you use on a cut. If you cut your hand, you just kind of fold it up like into a little bunch and put it on and press it. And it's got a real strong smell to it. That if you have a nosebleed, you put it by your nose, it'll stop your bleeding. If traditional foods are important because they don't have much uh, fat and uh, a lot of sugar in it. When we pick berries, you're out in the open. Um, it's peaceful, your mind is out, you know. You feel like you're being touched or something. When you, um, you could hear every little thing around you and it feels good. My favorite native food is um, seal gut. I liked it and my father was the one that taught me how to uh, braid it because he said, who will do it if he passes away? So I told him, I don't know. So he's the one that taught me how to do it. He started with um, a rope to teach me and that's how I learned. Especially for the young kids, um, we need to teach them more to get into native food instead of fast foods. I think that's very important for them. My name is Sylvia Ziochny. I'm a community health practitioner here in Atka, Alaska. I work with the doctor through the phone. Um, I work with the patients on basic care. I also update medicines and immunizations. I like the work. It's, it can be stressful at times, but it's worth it. I like to help people. I eat traditional foods every day twice a day. That's where I get my main source of food. 
Why are traditional foods important? They're important because it lowers the risk of high blood pressure, diabetes. It also has a good source of vitamins and iron. It's important because it helps with your bones. It helps your skin, you know, replace cells. It helps your hair grow. The traditional foods are more nutritious because when you get stuff from the store, you know, it's processed. And when you get it from the land, you know, it's everything is there. You know, there's nothing that's preserved or. My name is Jema Rukavishnikov. Um, I live here on St. Paul Island. I'm a community health practitioner here in our clinic. I've worked here for 16 years and as a community health practitioner for 12. And traditional foods are important. They're low in fat, um, very high in vitamins and nutrients that, that you can't get from you know, store-bought foods. We have um, the highest percent ratio of uh, diabetes per capita in the state of Alaska. Uh, we have a lot of people who have high cholesterol levels, um, hypertension, mm -hmm. along with some other stuff, but mostly it's hypertension, cholesterol problems, and diabetes that we see the most around here. It's gotten worse. Um, I would say we probably diagnose in between one to three people new cases each year. With diabetes rising so rapidly here on the island, um, I think the best way to try to keep it under control or lessen is to try to encourage more subsistence traditional foods. Um, encourage your children to go out and play more. You know, exercise is a key. My name is Louis Nevzov. I was born and raised here in Atka. A long time ago, in the 50s and 60s, there used to be healthy native people out here in Aleuts. In the 70s, they were still good until the 80s, when they started traveling and fast food, all the junky food started and that's when I started hearing people catching cancer. And I was wondering, how come? You know, I thought it was something like a bug that you get from one person to other person. No, what it is, but that kind of diet they're using that's what it was and like they we used to live on seal sea lion reindeer and fish and plant off of uh, what summer wherever it grows and they were healthy when i was home never had nothing high blood pressure or anything see i started salmon fish and halibut fish in mid-60s around there in Kodiak. Then we don't get food like we do over there, but we get seal, sea lion once in a while. And when we come in town, we can't keep it on the boat. So we use what we can, and when we come in town, we got nothing on board. So we have to go to restaurants and eat. Or we'll go to the store and buy store food and eat it on the boat when we're in town. That's when I got high blood pressure. And then in 79, I came back here. I quit crab fishing, I quit salmon fishing, I quit halibut fishing. I had enough fishing in me. So I came out here and worked. Then in uh, mid-80s, that's when my blood pressure started going down. 
and then I had nothing. So the doctor asked me, I see you've got no more high blood pressure, what happened? I told him I just live off the ground and see. So he said, that's good. Just keep it up, so that's what I still do. My name is Blas G. Chabon, raised here on St. Paul, um, born in Anchorage, and definitely one of the luckiest people in the world to be raised here on St. Paul. It's hard. It's hard to go and live on the island, especially if you're governed by money. Subsistence, a lot of people don't have that ability now, the elders don't have that. It's the younger generation now have been taking up the process of learning. When I go out hunting, I always prepare to go out, but I'm going to also make sure that I stay calm with it. There's a peace to it. Uh, the, that little calm of coming out here, you know you're gonna be taking a couple of animals or at least an animal you can't really know if you're going to get it either. But you have to go and prepare. You have to go and know that you're going to get it. It's not just knowing. You have to go and understand what, you're, what is around you. Winds, the tide, how the seals are doing, or the sea lion are doing, birds. A certain time of the day when they're out riding or flying, it's definitely spiritual. It, it definitely makes you one. It's an understanding. I think you grew up with it. I grew up that way. Yours. You have to respect everything around you, down to the down to the blade of grass. Um, from both sides, the subsistence as well as your city, city or either governed by money anyway governed by time. Out here, subsistence, you really don't have that. You've got life. As you have heard, our traditional lifestyle provides more than just healthy food for the Alaska Native communities. It is also vital for a social, cultural, economic, and spiritual well-being as it has been for thousands of years.